Hi everyone, John here from All Miniatures Great and Small, and today we're looking at the M12 155mm American Artillery Battery for Flames of War. This unit can currently be found in the D-Day American uh, Intelligence Briefing, and it is a very interesting and unique looking unit. It's one of my favorites out of the book. I don't get to take it very often, but uh, when I do, I'm always happy, even if it underperforms, just because it looks so cool. And that cool factor could also intimidate your enemies, those who would oppose you. All right, so the M12 is obviously the, the biggest feature of this bad boy is the giant 155 millimeter artillery gun that it hauls around. There are like little steps that fold down here in the back so that the crew can work it. I think originally when these were, were sold, there were, were actually crew in the blister, but I can't remember. I built these so long ago for a, a D-Day event at Shifting Sands, probably more than 10 years ago, over 10 years ago. All right, uh, so let's talk about uh, the stats before we get into the details about these tanks. So the M12 155 millimeter artillery battery, let's pull up the card, okay. We have keywords, tank unit, gigantic, and time on target. Tank units, kind of obvious. They're not uh, infantry or gun teams. Gigantic simply means um, that they cannot be ambushed closer than 16 inches. They have to be further away. So they can't ambush in short range, um, even in concealing terrain like normal units. And then they have time on target, which is an American rule, which means if you range in on the first attempt, um, uh, your enemy is re-rolling saves for their infantry and gun teams, but importantly, not tank teams. The uh, M12 uh, is hit on a three plus, which means that, um, you know, it's like trained. If someone is shooting at you though, with anything more than a, a rifle or machine gun, you are probably, you've probably done something wrong or the battle's turned against you or you know, it's not looking good. All right, armor wise, front armor, side armor, top armor is all zero, zero across the board, which is nice. It still means it's armored. It's not heavily armored, but it at least gives you a save. So you roll a die, you add it to zero, you might get a six, which is not great, but it's better than nothing. It's better than being unarmored. Uh, in motivation, we've got a four plus. That's uh, important for sticking around. Their counterattacks only a six, but you know you don't want these guys in assault. Their skill is veteran three plus, which is very important for ranging in, and they have the self-propelled gun uh, assault value of six, which means again, you don't want them in uh, assault range. All right, so tactical is 10. So they uh, tactically move just as fast as a Sherman. Terrain 12, cross country 18, road dash 20. Pretty sure, check me if I'm wrong, but those are the same stats that you'll find on a Sherman. Their cross is a three plus. So maneuverable, maneuverability wise, there we go. That's the word I want to use. Um, the M12 is very, you know, can keep up with armored columns, can keep up with Shermans. Uh, the weapon. All right, here we go. So you have the M12 155 millimeter uh, cannon has a range of 96 inches as an artillery piece. Anti-tank three, firepower two plus, and it's forward firing. So um, in version four, anti-tank ratings for artillery dropped. They were a little bit too deadly against tanks than they should be. So even something like uh, the 155 millimeter gun, which is a huge, huge gun, artillery-wise, your anti-tank value is three. So that means against things like uh, Tigers that might have a top armor of two, um, you can't destroy them. Uh, even if they roll a one, they're they're equaling, and you're probably going to bail them out, but you can't you can't kill them from the top. Uh, normal tanks that have top armor one. Uh, well, you, they can fail on a, on a one and on a two they equal. So still not great chances. These are not what you're bringing for um, anti-tank work. In version three, it was a little bit different. You, you could, as a viable tactic, take artillery to deal with tanks. Uh, but now in version four, I think it like, better reflects the reality of, of World War II 
at least a little bit better that um, you're not taking artillery to deal with uh, active tanks on the battlefield. So uh, the two plus firepower is great. That is really fantastic for uh, firing at infantry and gun teams though. So once you range in with your artillery, your firepower rating of two plus means you're not really too worried about things like, uh, um, you know, w once they fail their save, you're gonna get that firepower rating even if they're dug in um, for bulletproof cover. And then um, this gun can also fire in direct fire. So in direct fire, it has a pretty sad range, only 24 inches, one shot while it's halted, zero shots while it's moving so you cannot move and shoot the big gun which makes sense because the guys have to pile out the back and load the gun and he has to come to a stop it has a anti-tank rating of 15 which i believe and again check me if i'm wrong that this is the highest direct anti-tank rating in the Amer for the americans in the d-day book i'm pretty sure it is um then we have firepower's auto. So basically auto means one plus. So if your opponent fails their armor save, if they're a vehicle, they are automatically destroyed. Um, gun teams obviously get their save, but if they are, you know, dug in or, or whatever, they're gonna, they're gonna, you're gonna auto pass your firepower test. It has the brutal and forward firing rule. Forward firing just means that uh, it can't shoot on things to the side. It has to turn during the movement phase, um, which means in direct fire anyway, you can't, you can't direct fire at someone behind you unless I guess you, you get off a successful blitz or something. Uh, and then uh, brutal is re-rolling saves, I believe. Yeah, gun, infantry gun and unarmored tank teams will re-roll successful saves. So again, pretty good to dig out inventory. So that's the stats for the tank. Um, I believe we just looked at it. These guys come in uh, at 12 points for a unit of four, which if you're firing uh, artillery, if you're bringing these for artillery batteries, you're gonna wanna bring four. Anytime you have two, um, one, it's, um, you know, you're re-rolling your, your successful saves, I believe it is. We'll double check that in a second. And also, you're, you're much easier to break. You lose one tank and you're testing for the rest of the battle. I should also point out that this gun has no smoke, neither direct fire smoke or smoke bombardment. And that's a very important distinction. Um, American lists often live or die through their use of smoke or their successful use of smoke and this uh, unit doesn't have it. Next let's talk about how to um, use these guys in combat. I do think I'm going to be having a separate uh, primer video for things like artillery, uh, assault, um, movement, movement orders, things like that, that are a little bit more generic, aren't uh, going to be tied to a specific unit. So I haven't produced those yet, but that's uh, an idea down the pipeline that I want to produce. I've had some people ask me about something like that, and uh, I think it's a great idea. But uh, for this particular unit, what I'm going to talk about artillery-wise is really going to apply to almost any um, artillery unit in the game. Now we'll focus on Americans and tying this into various lists, but um, just keep in mind that this, or when we're talking artillery and how to use artillery batteries, um, it, it, this is generic advice. First, what is this unit good at shooting at? We already talked about the fact that it's not that great against tanks. So ideally your targets are going to be infantry and gun teams. Now one of the strategies is you use your artillery to take out your enemy's artillery or failing taking them out, at least suppressing them, pinning them down, having them take losses, making them test, and then eventually running away. Um, so in that regard, this particular unit is, is pretty good at that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. With a two plus firepower on their artillery template, um, they are, you know, a lot of times if you fire at a dug-in artillery team, 
you've got to make a firepower test to destroy the gun team, even if they fail their save. So we'll talk a little bit about that process. So if you're kind of new to this, you can understand. So let's say I'm firing at a... Eight point eight centimeter German heavy anti-aircraft gun. So normally you range in. You put your template over the target, you range in, and we'll assume that you hit. So once you hit, you've got to um sorry, once you range in, so first you range in, then you try to hit everything under the template. Once you hit the unit under the template, that unit needs to make a save. So you know, four plus, three plus, whatever it happens to be for that unit. If that unit fails, then if it's dug in, you need to take a firepower test to destroy it. So something like a mortar firing at a gun that's dug in, it's going to have a really hard time destroying it because they're going to need either a five or a five or six on a die roll um, to knock it out. Um, 105 millimeter guns I think are a three plus to knock it out so 66 percent chance these guys are successful on their firepower on a two plus so they are what is that 82 percent of the time they're going to be successful at their firepower test in knocking out that gun and it's just it just increases the odds of removing that gun that opposing gun or infantry teams um, that much faster Okay, so the two plus firepower is the really important thing when you're firing at infantry and gun teams. Anti-tank's good, um, you know, at three, it's, you're, if you don't have no other target on the battlefield and all you can shoot at are tanks, by all means, take a shot at the tanks. But if you have a multitude of targets, um, you wanna prefer trying to go after infantry teams and uh, gun teams. With artillery um, like this, it can serve a couple of functions. One is um, obviously the same function that any artillery unit's gonna do. Um, and that's sit on your back line and provide artillery support to your units as they advance or are defending. When you bring these on the board or deploy them though, they do, because they have that beefy gun in direct fire mode, they do or can provide some overwatch or cover for one of your objectives. Placing four of these in your deployment zone covering one of your objectives is a pretty big deterrent to um, you know enemy tanks coming because they don't want to face that anti-tank 15. It's terrifying. Now uh, the savvy player is going to realize well you, you know it's only four shots and it's sure it's AT-15 and auto firepower but you know if I have three or four five tanks I can weather that they're only going to hit half of the time and and so on but um, again that's that is a deterrent they're not so much a deterrent against um, infantry companies though because they have no machine guns no self-defense machine guns uh, so they could also fall prey to things like German air <laughs> if you if you ever see German air um, so but sitting back and covering an objective with those guns is, um, you know, that, that's a serious statement that uh, you, they're gonna have to fight to take that objective from you. The other thing that these guys can do much easier than like static uh, 105 millimeter field artillery battery is the fact that they can move. They can move like a Sherman tank. So if you want to bring them up to directly support your push, um, they can keep up with your tanks. You don't want your enemy to shoot at them because if they get a shot at them, they're going to take it. It's just too hard to resist that front armor zero. So you need to be cautious with them. But if you've dealt with the enemy tanks and um, you need to dig out infantry that are in buildings or um, you know pesky artillery units, these guys can roll up and direct fire. And with that brutal and that auto firepower, they're very good at taking infantry out of buildings. Infantry out of buildings is one of the things that, that can be tough for a lot of players to take out um, because tanks can't assault them. You can't assault German infantry in a building with Shermans. They're, they're in there, you have to shoot them out. 
Um, so these guys shooting at infantry in a building, well, once they manage to hit, then that infantry team makes a save. Uh, but because the, this gun is brutal, they're going to re-roll their successful saves. So each, each infantry team you hit has to make two saves, in essence. And then if they uh, fail, they're automatically destroyed. There's, there's no roll for uh, bulletproof cover. So they're very good at removing things that are dug in or in buildings because of that, that firepower. And honestly, that firepower of 2 plus is one of the big things you're, you're paying for, why this is more expensive than a 105 millimeter artillery battery. Um, and I sing the praises of the 105 millimeter artillery battery. They're fantastic. But um, you know these guys just take it up one more level. All right, so when looking for places to place these, you always want to try to give them concealment, which is kind of a general rule for uh, any vehicle. You know, you want them to be concealed from the enemy. But again, they're only they're hit on three plus. They only have a zero armor. They're going to die to a stiff breeze. So you want to make sure you give them every potential advantage. So one would be, you know, having them inside a field rather than out in the open. And there, now you can see them in their field. Um, that just gives them one extra, um, you know, point of value for, for, for saving. So if someone's shooting at them at long range, they're concealed behind the fence, it's going to be, normally they're hit on threes, fours for range, five for concealment. So that, that goes a long way towards keeping them safe. But again, keeping them behind trees, behind mountains, behind buildings, someplace where the enemy can't see them without making a concerted effort to go after them is uh, your best bet. And because they have a 96 inch range, not only can you hit everything on your table, but you might be able to reach another table and affect another battle going on. I know you can't do that, but that would be pretty cool. Um, so these guys uh, are um, multi-purpose. They've got a lot of, of functions. The fact that they can move, that they're an armored team, gives them a lot more functionality. It also means that if you are ranged in on, someone is bombarding you, um, you can move without, um, um, you know, uh, moving a 105 millimeter artillery battery, field artillery battery, is a lot more difficult than moving these guys. These guys can just drive down the road and set up shop someplace else uh, quite easily. The fact that they're tank teams also opens up cool things like scoot and shoot and blitz. Things that uh, I believe, I don't think the field artillery, bat any artillery uh, batteries and artillery unit can use those movement orders. Um, so you have those advantages. So maybe you do, um, you know, blitz forward four inches and, and fire. The only downside to a blitz is if they fail their blitz, they cannot fire an artillery bombardment. Um, but if they pass their blitz, um, they, they can. So that is something to, to keep in mind. Um, so they, they have that mobility and they have the ability to move if they're targeted, which is something that, that's pretty cool. I'll also point out that their footprint is smaller, even though it's a big tank, their footprint is smaller than a... Um, normal large flames of war base which is what most artillery would be on so you can see it's almost like uh, well not quite half but almost just half the size so you can squeeze more into an area or you can hide them easier than big gun teams all in all when you do decide to fire these guns um, you want to make sure that their fire is directly contributing to your battlefield objective Seeing a great infantry unit out in the open and uh, ranging in on it might be great. You might be able to inflict heavy casualties and pin them down. But if that doesn't help you win the battle, um, what's the point? If you have a harder shot at the objective that if successful wins you the battle right away or next turn, you know that's the shot you should be taking. So being able to identify those is just something experience-wise. That's why. So, there you go guys, I know this is probably a little bit shorter video, that might be a pro or con depending on what you think, but um, let me know what you guys think about the M12 155mm artillery battery. Um, do you guys like it? Do you not like it? Do you take it in your lists? 
I find it's good, I enjoy it, I give it a thumbs up, uh, and it will be in future battle reports. As always, I'd like to mention uh, to please check us out on Facebook if you get a chance. Uh, give us a follow there, uh, like, we, we always appreciate it. If you follow us there, you can always kind of keep track. We try to post what's going on. Uh, you can always engage with us there. And then uh, here on YouTube, a like and subscribe would be awesome. Also click that bell to receive notification when we publish new content. As always, thanks for watching and keep on wargaming.